May Allah heal you from whatever pain you are suffering from. May Allah heal you from whatever pain you are suffering from. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Anbiya wal Mursaleen. Amma ba'd fa'a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back to our program spiritual cures mashallah so we have to sabur by in the studio as normal assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh alaikum assalam rahmatullahi how are you have sabur alhamdulillah mashallah you looking nice with that green imam sharif jazakallah does it look green it looks brilliantly green alhamdulillah but uh, nice there mashallah azul jazakallah khaira for joining Ameen. us and Ameen. i hope you can join us every week inshallah azul inshallah uh, it sabur by will also do the emergency istikhara as they say that if there's anything that's left over uh, but uh, please inshallah. feel free uh, to send a message to your family and friends so that they can also be watching the program and also they can get involved as well. Yeah, I've got a message. Assalamu alaikum, assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, I always feel ill. My heart beats irregular. Is there anything that you can help out with? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, please don't read my name out on TV. I would like to have. I like to have some help. I have pain in my legs and I, we, and I feel weak when I am walking. Uh, another one, Assalamu alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I keep having dizzy spells. Uh, I don't know what that is for. I have checked with the doctors and they have said everything is fine. They have done many tests. Nothing has come round. So whilst, uh, mashallah, Saurbai finds the spiritual cures for us, some, it was I for Today, inshallah, Zawajal, there is also, I'm going to go through some of uh, a, a beautiful booklet that was uh, uh, given to us to read uh, beneficial points. So inshallah, I'm going to go through a lot of beneficial points, some things that will make us uh, inshallah azawajal, understand a few things and also some very, very important Madani pearls from Amir Ali Sunnah. Uh, number one, keep the home and all the household possessions clean and put everything in its rightful place. <coughs> Now, this is another very important thing. You know, if, if everyone uses things at home, for example, cups and utensils, or maybe, you know, these were, you can, you, know, you can easily put them. But well, sometimes you might have a can opener. Yeah, there's only one can opener. No, you don't have 10 can openers at home. You might just have one. Now, if someone has taken the can opener and he's put it into a different place, now the next person that's going to be using that is going to be looking for that. Where's the can opener? But inshallah as well, if you all decide on a place that this is where we are going to put it, then it'll be easier for everyone to look for that thing. Wash all the pots in the home, clean them and then place them in a cupboard or upside down on a shelf. If you need to use these pots again, do not utilize them without washing them first. So this is another thing, especially when you are not using any pots or pans or cups or any other thing, plates. When you put them away and you wish to use them, <coughs> make sure that you give them a, a good rinse before you start to use them as well. Do not store away any soiled pots or any pots that have rem remnant of foods or medicine present, present on them. Germs can grow on used pots or those which are stained with food or medicine and there remains a risk of various diseases arising. Another beautiful point, you know, sometimes what we do is we'll have something and we'll just give you a good a rinse and then we'll put it away. Halanki, you need to wash it properly. So make sure that is washed properly as well. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim In regards to uh, the message which came uh, in regarding the irregular heartbeat, uh, in regards to this, it's mentioned um, in a booklet uh, written by Amir al-Sunnat, Ailing Worshipper, uh, it mentions uh, that if the person who has irregular heartbeat, if he recites 
this following uh, verse from Surah Yasin Sharif, 101 times with the Ru Sharif before and after, performs dam upon any food wow. item or any drinking item, whether it's water or any drink that he's going to consume, uh, performs dam upon it and then eats that or drinks whatever he's performed dam upon, inshallah, the irregular heartbeat will come uh, uh, into no uh, normal uh, beating, inshallah. And the verse is uh, part 23, Surah Yasin Sharif, verse number 58. Salamun qawlam min rabbir rahim. Salamun qawlam min rabbir rahim. Salamun qawlam min rabbir rahim. Recite this 101 times, Drushri before and after, perform them upon any food item that one, a person is going to consume or upon any um, beverage, whether it's water or some drink, whatever, perform them and then consume that, inshallah. The heartbeat, inshallah, will come. In regards to the second message which was mentioned, um, regarding uh, leg pain uh, and feeling weakness whilst walking. Uh, it's mentioned to recite after every namaz, after every salah, recite ayat -e karima ayat -e karima seven times and perform dham upon oneself. Inshallah, the leg pain as well as the weakness, inshallah, will be removed. MashaAllah. I've got a, a message here. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My son, I don't, uh, he, he, she, she, Shimon's given the name as well. He has a habit of lying, and whenever he gets into trouble, he will always lie, but he, we will find out later, and sometimes he does that quite often. So that's one problem. Uh, <coughs> another Islamic has given. As a request, istikhara request as well, inshallah. I'm going to mention that uh, later on as well. But like I said, if you deemed you knew the istikhara doing, please make sure that you have the name, the mother's name, and the the, the brief description, inshallah. Will be able to All in one istikhara. message. All in one message. That is very important. Because sometimes what happens is when you are sending your messages, and these <clears> messages <throat> come, and there is another message in between, then they get uh, muddled up. Yeah, they get idhar udhar. And then we, we find it really difficult. Can't tell the difference yeah. between head and toe. Yes, yes. MashaAllah. <laughs> so Alhamdulillah as well. Those viewers who are watching us now, they may please make sure that whenever you send us the istikhara request, uh, make sure that the name, the mother's name and everything <coughs> is there. So inshallah it will be much easier for us as well. Bismillah uh, ar One more message which you mentioned, uh, somebody who's uh, uh, going through dizzy spells. They've had medical checks, etc. Nothing seems to... Uh, um, come up regarding the dizziness so there doesn't seem to be any reason uh, in all the health reports etc have come back positive uh, those who uh, feel dizziness or sudden spells of dizziness recite uh, the following 1000 times ya hayyu ya hayyu ya hayyu 1000 times with the ru sharif before and after and perform them upon oneself inshallah these dizzy spells will fade away inshallah ji mashallah as well some more um uh, Madani pearls from Amir al Sunnah, inshallah, will add them as well. Never drink water or eat food in the dark without looking. And there's so many reasons for that. There was an incident that happened in Pakistan uh, where a young person woke up at night to drink something, and because the, uh, the, the water pot was not covered or the jug wasn't covered, uh, something went inside and he died and it burst open. And all the the, uh, the poison was in that water, and this sadly this person, and Alhamdulillah he did survive, but it was very very difficult. Uh, so please make sure that when you are uh, drinking water, when you're eating something, always eat and drink in the light. Uh, do not leave a char pai, a chair, or a pot, or any furniture in the path of the house or courtyard, as the one who is used to walk in accordance to his usual routine can sometimes bump into them and hurt themselves and sometimes this can result in severe injury now especially when you're in the garden and uh, you know you like to have a little stroll in the garden early in the morning or at night you know you want to go out in the garden or even at home as well and uh, we've uh, we've seen this uh, incident where uh, someone is at home and kids sometimes they leave the toys around and that person slipped on that toy and he's broken his arm and he's finding it difficult to straighten it, or he's not straightening it properly. Maybe he's watching it as well, the program. 
Do not drink water by placing your mouth directly on the opening of the pitcher or tub. Because firstly, this is against correct etiquette. And additionally, there is a chance that there is a hidden insect in the pitcher or tub and it will flow into your stomach along with the water. Yeah. So now this happens as well because um, if you are uh, drinking water, especially if it's inside, outside in the garden, and you know you hardly ever use the tap, and now in the summer you decide to go in the garden and uh, you know have a uh, you know make something, and you want to use the tap. Then what happens is normally is if you uh, if you just see you might see a spider or something inside the tap. So make sure you open the tap, get the water running first, and then make sure. But then still don't even put your mouth straight to the tap fill it with water or a cup or even drink it in your hand so that if there's anything it will fall into the hand and you'll be saved like that inshallah azza wa jal ji another one assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh uh, i have a daughter uh, she is uh, five years or she's a uh, sorry eight years old when she goes to the masjid to read her quran she starts to be scared and every day i have to go and pick her up again and for that it is going to be difficult to her for her to go to madrasa or again is there anything that you can help us with istikhara also pain body pains i think uh, you mentioned regarding somebody who's Ji. recovering with medicine but it's a slow process uh, if they recite ya salamu ya salamu ya salamu abundantly inshallah ya salamu ya speed salamu. of the process inshallah theek hai inshallah so if that was yourself who sent the message then ya salamu you read and inshallah the things will be yeah, in better for that as well. Sure. Ji. Um, another thing Amir al mentioned is uh, appoint one day every week or every 10 days to clean the entire home and then clean the entire house on that day. Yeah, so as, as a family, this could be done. Make sure that you choose one day. Every day, Alhamdulillah, I know that uh, you know, you'll be cleaning your house every single day, but there might be something like, for example, the attic. So might not go into the attic or even to a room where which you hardly ever use. Make sure you go into that room and make sure give you a good clean as I well. You'll have like daily, you'll have daily calls which you do yeah. every, every day, and then you'll I have. I think you'll have daily, you... weekly, monthly, annually, or ten more, ten oh. years. Yeah. So, so like you know, for example, a garage. You know, I've seen people their garage is stuffed up with things. You know, they don't even know where things are, and then they say, yeah. "Oh, you know, panya saara baad kholay to cheez labi." They're waiting for spring, huh? they yeah. spring clean. <laughs> so don't worry, inshallah. So make sure that you clean your garage, whatever is properly. And inshallah, it will be much better for us, inshallah. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Please, can you help us uh, find our lost property? We don't know what to read or what to do. It is quite frustrating that we cannot find the thing that we have lost. Okay, watch the whole way looks for that, inshallah. Uh, <laughs> remaining seated throughout the day and night or remaining asleep or laying down on the bed is very harmful. For one's health. Islamic brothers should walk around in open, clean air, and Islamic sisters should carry out some work with their hands. This is very important for their health. So that's a very beautiful Madani pearl that sometimes, you know, especially on a Sunday, we get a Sunday off, it's a lay down. I I tend to, if I sleep an hour or a half an hour extra, I always get the headache. You know, so all day I, I've got nothing to do but sleep. But there are some people who like to just sleep and don't do anything, you know, they called couch potatoes. Yeah, so we don't want to be couch potatoes. We need to go out and uh, look work as well. What, should there be garden onions? There should be garden onions and do it something uh, progressive. <laughs> the, in regards to um, the, the person who's messaged in, uh, where they lost some possessions, lost some property. In regards to uh, that, if you recite Ya Jami'u, Ya Jami'u, Ya Jami'u abundantly, inshallah, the lost possession, property, etc. will be found. Now we said that we're going to give the special wazifa. So, so if you've got the special wazifa, the wazifa for today, uh, remember that this wazifa, what we are going to give you, inshallah, so that if you can try to uh, act upon it yourself, if you can try to send it to other people as well, it'll benefit another uh, other person as well, inshallah. So mm -hmm. let's uh, watch uh, the wazifa, inshallah. Yeah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In regards to today's wazifa, it's regarding a particular body part which is one of the main function body parts of, of the human body, uh, the heart. Now, this particular um, spiritual cure, inshallah, that we're going to mention today, 
uh, if uh, those who act upon the spiritual uh, cure, inshallah, they will gain protection of the heart. And it's simply that um, there's no fixed time, any time through the day, if you recite Surah Yasin Sharif, recite Surah Yasin Sharif just the once, Duru Sharif before and after, perform them upon apple, and inshallah, you're rewarded. Once you recited the Surah Yasin Sharif and performed them upon the apple, you can eat the apple. So you get a reward for reciting as well, alhamdulillah. And uh, by doing this daily, inshallah, azawajal, one will be protected from any type of heart-related problems. Uh, oh, and there's a footnote in regards to this that uh, one must uh, consume this apple on an empty stomach, so in the morning, uh, say for breakfast. Ji, salams uncles, wa alaykum as -salams. I hope you're well. My mum's name is, <clears throat> I struggle to gain weight and I'm very conscious about this. Please do istikhara for this. Also, I have da bad dark circles. Could you please give me a wazifa for this too, please? Uh, circles around the eyes, I think. Yeah, the, yeah sometimes you get them around. But let's continue, inshallah, as well. As soon as we get any more messages, inshallah, we can have them as well. Uh, do not toss around small children while playing with them because Allah forbid, if they slip from your hands, it could put their life at risk. And this is another... <clears throat> very important thing sometimes you know we get little babies and we toss them up and then you know what if you don't catch them then that's it you know they could be very very damaging to their health or even astaghfirullah allah ta'ala forbid it'll come to a place a, a, a situation where they're going to be losing their life as well uh, do not sit in the doorway as this will bother all those who enter and leave and it will also be a nuisance for you as well now, this is a, another thing that sometimes we go to a, a, a place where you, know, you go to someone's <coughs> house and sometimes people, they walk in and they sit there. You know, what's <coughs> the point sitting in front of the doorway when you know the next person is going to come in as well and you've got to stand up. So make sure that whenever you walk into a house, you know, go and look for a room, stand there for a few seconds and look around, look for a place and go and sit there rather than sitting near the door because that's going to be really Yeah, difficult. like this one, Abzal. Got a totka uh, home remedy regarding the message that we just received, um, <clears throat> where somebody is not able to put weight on at the time to Jeez. put weight, so weakness and, and weight. Um, you like this one? Uh, it mentions warm some buffalo milk and add some honey and drink as Mashallah. required. Mashallah, <laughs> buffalo milk. What if you can't get <laughs> a ben. buffalo milk? Bans, na? Jee jee jee. What if you can't get one? I don't know. Do you have bans here? You don't have them here, do you? you have cow, a cow, milk, cow, cow milk, milk and you can get goat milk as well. Yeah. So if it's not buffalo milk, then? <coughs> Try cow milk. Or you take a holiday to Pakistan. Yeah. There's plenty of buffaloes there. Obviously, if it's to do with your health, then you can do anything. Don't you? Gigi. But, Shala, uh, and regarding the uh, but circles. I think they do have some buffaloes in Birmingham. I, I think you uh, you might be able to. Yeah, there's, I've heard there's a, a company that's bought over some buffaloes from Pakistan. And in regards to the uh, dark circles uh, that you mentioned, uh, Absaf, uh, around the eyes, mm -hmm. in regards to this, it's mentioned that um, after each salah, if you recite Ya Nuru, Ya Nuru, Ya Nuru, 15 times, the before and after, perform them upon your hands and then wipe upon the areas of the face. And here we're talking about around the eyes. So if they rub the hands upon the eyes, inshallah, the dark circles will go away. Oh, inshallah. inshallah. This is also beneficial for um, uh, you know, like, blotch, like blotching and like sometimes you get like some marks on your face. Gee, gee, gee. It's also beneficial for that as well. <clears throat> I think sometimes it's not the men that are more worried about, it's the women that are more worried about because you know, it's there. You know, it's this, uh, natural beautification is uh, when you uh, perform wuzu, you're going to read namaz. Gee, Reading know. namaz itself Abundant, you know, with abundance of how, how as far as upon us are related, that in itself beautifies the face. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Which is natural beauty, you can't beat that. Gee, mashallah. Sometimes I think, you know, with this dark, it's like you're not getting the sleep or. Gee, gee. You know, uh, uh, eye bugs. Eye bugs. What are they called? Eye bugs. Eye bugs, mashallah. <laughs> Gee, I've got another man. Yeah, there's a few uh, Gerilu Totki in regards to that as well. Putting cucumber. Yeah. On your eyes and also uh, use tea bugs. Used tea bugs? Tea bugs, yeah. Well, yeah actually, you know, them, then, aren't we? Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have another pot at home where used tea bugs can go. 
Mashallah, you guys doing a very Sina. good job. May Allah Ta'ala accept your hard work for the deen. Amen. Also, is there a, a rush for dandruff? A cure for it? Uh, I mean cure, but I mean maybe misprint or something like hmm. that. Is there a... Predictive texting of the, it causes a lot of problems oh, sometimes. Yeah. The other day I sent a message, it was about someone else. Yeah, another one, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa alaikum wa salam. Your program is always good to, uh, to watch. May Allah Ta'ala bless you and give you uh, more power to do good these, these programs. It does help a lot of families. Um, inshallah, <coughs> I have them and watch them myself. Mashallah. Mashallah. Jazakallah. I had someone last time and uh, <coughs> they, you know, they, they always watch our program. And it goes that one day there was uh, someone asked a question and they were suffering for that as well. And they had to go out to uh, pay as you go, you know, our meal. And they, they, they spent nearly 3,000 pounds and things, still things did not go better for them. You know, so mm. maybe sometimes what it is, you know, we're all right, you know, but there might be someone who needs our help. So inshallah, if we can try to help other people as well in that manner as well, inshallah as well. Sure. Yeah, assalamu alaikum wa alaikum as salam wa alaikum as My nephew has been in hospital for having blisters in his mouth and fever. Um, he also suffers from eczema. Can you please help him with any wazifa or anything? Inshallah, azawajal. Sure. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, me and my family are going to Pakistan and I want my eldest son to come with us as well, but he is not coming with us. If there's anything that we can do and convince him to come with us, inshallah. So that, gee, I think uh, to, to convince someone, there's a, you know, I just want to mention this because I've had this before. Uh, why is it that you want to take your son to Pakistan? You know, you may be thinking, oh, just for, you know, we're just going to go and have some fun and come back. But I've had a few in cases where people have been taking their children to Pakistan and not even letting them know they're getting them married. Now, that is not, you know, the, the sunnah, the manner of getting anyone married. And then later on, because obviously, you know, you made a fool out of them and, you know, you, you encourage, if, you know, if you sit down and talk to them and explain to them, that will be more better rather than taking them, you know, without any consultation from them as well. And the father that I spoke to, he goes, Oji, kuchna. And I think that that's the wrong decision for you are making. You're not asking the children. Make sure that your children are happy with whom they're going to get married with. You know, so inshallah, I know as parents, we need to make sure that we find the right rishta for our children. And again, children should also understand that what are your parents are doing is for your benefit you know if they've brought you up and you know to an age where you need to get married sometimes children will turn around and say oh, what does my mom and dad know you know they, they didn't know anything how, to, how could they bring you up you know up on your 20 25 years old so please okay. you know have a medium where you can sit down and talk the children should be understanding of their parents and the parents should be understanding their children as well so inshallah, so without you're going to be beneficial or else if you take them to Pakistan, get them married, bring them over here, then you're going to have the another istikhara done. My son doesn't listen, he doesn't call his wife or, you know, over what can we do? You know, you, what you could have done was you know, asked him if he's ready and for a, the wedding. A lot of these times I've saw it results in divorce and yeah. then you've got brothers and sisters falling out and, you know, a big uh, fight in the family and brother, brothers and sisters yeah. have broken up and... Yeah, it's called caused chaos, it, it, it has, and I think I, if that, I, I think the son might be of marital marital age, is he? And maybe that's why he's trying yeah. to avoid because maybe one of his friends has been through the same situation or something, so he's scared. Jeez, uh, mm. a few more Madri pearls from Amir al Sunnah, inshallah. <coughs> if a person has rash, pimples, or pain in a personal area of the body, do not ask him where it is, as this will be embarrassing for him. If somebody asks you a question. Answer him first and then continue with your other work after. When saying something to someone or replying to them, speak clearly and in an audible voice so that one you are addressing can hear and understand you properly. Now the, the beauty of the Prophet Sallallahu messages were that the Sahaba Ikram Muridwan, they say that we could have counted the words the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned because they were so clear and they were so beautiful that we could understand whatever he was saying. And sometimes when people are talking, 
You know, you say, eh, care by, eh? what did you say? It's because you can't understand that person. So make sure, we, especially when you are trying to explain something to someone, make sure you speak slowly and clearly so that the other person can understand what you are talking about. Uh, another thing, um, if you need to speak to someone about a private matter regarding a certain person and that person is present in the gathering, do not continuously indicate towards him with your hands or eyes that this will cause him to have all sorts of uh, doubts. For example, you know, especially when you see that when someone is from in a distance and two people are talking and you're talking about a specific person and you say, yeah, him there, the one who sat there. Obviously, that person is going to be thinking, you know, they're talking about me. Yeah, so don't ever t t t do that. Maybe you, you, you're talking good about him. You know, that person over there is so good. Now, that person might be thinking, hey, I hope they're talking about me. Or, I wonder what they're talking about me. And that is going to have misconceptions in the mind. And that could cause issues and problems as well. Ji. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In regards to uh, the message which you received regarding uh, a small child, I think they mentioned, that is, he's got blisters and he's in Ji. hospital. Maybe a nephew, I think you mentioned. It's been a while, so we've forgotten exactly what the detail. But a child basically that was in hospital and is suffering from blisters, any spiritual cure for him. If they uh, recite Ya Raqibu, Ya Raqibu, Ya Raqibu, three times, Dhru Sharif, before and after, perform them upon the blisters, inshallah, they will fade away. Uh, and they also mentioned regarding fever. Uh, and I've got um, uh, a spiritual cure. It mentions that Hazrat Sayyid, uh, Sayyid Imam Jafir Sadiq anh, mentions that recite, or the person who recites Surah Fatiha, 40 times with the Ru Sharif before and after, performs dumb upon water and then sprinkles some drops. Sprinkle, not splash. As okay. was, obviously, it's going to be blessed water yeah. and we don't want it to fall onto the floor. So sprinkles uh, upon the face of the, the patient. Inshallah, the fever, the temperature, inshallah, will go away. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. <laughs> <clears throat> and in regards to dandruff, I think you mentioned somebody you mentioned they've got dandruff yeah. and they can't get rid of it. Um, there's a famous shampoo, but I'm not going to say his name. But okay, uh, this is the spiritual cure in regards to dandruff. Um, take any oil, whether it's uh, mustard oil or coconut oil. Uh, so, a bottle of mustard oil, coconut oil, recite Surah Al Layl 41 times, the Ru Sharif before and after. But whilst you're reciting with Bismillah Rahman Rahim each time. So Surah Layl 41 times with Bismillah Rahman Rahim each time. Perform dumb upon this bottle of oil. Or okay. well open the top and perform dumb onto the oil. Uh, whether it's coconut that oil really or helpful, that. Did you? Uh, so perform dumb upon the oil and then massage this oil into the head on a night. Inshallah the dandruff will Mashallah. Ji, another beauty, beautiful Madani pearl from Amir al Sunnah, inshallah. Mashallah. If you need to give something to someone, place it in his hands with your own hands or put it into a container and present it to him. Do not give anything to another person by throwing it from a distance because there is a chance that it will not land in his hand and it will instead fall on the floor, causing it to break or become damaged. Oh, you could even hurt the person. That yeah. depends what you're throwing. You know, not a knife. Yeah, if you're throwing it a depends. knife, you see it. Well, even not a knife. It yeah. could be, for example, or pass me the remote. Somebody yeah. remote and it throws it. it. might even break the remote, but it might even hurt him as well. Yeah. Depending on where it hits him. You know, it is, again, you know, it's, it's something that uh, we need to make sure that sometimes people throw things and, uh, you know, mm. it's, it's not a sunnah, it's, it's gonna, especially a pen as well. Don't throw a pen at someone, maybe it's going to hit their eyes. So all these kind of things need to be... I think pen's something that, I mean, if we look at it through the Amiri Sun, Sunnah's uh, mind or their way of thinking, then a pen can be something sacred because look at the things they can going to write with. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ji wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Is there anything that we could do to alleviate pain in the feet? I sometimes have swollen feet. What is that that I could be reading? Gee, whilst somebody looks for that, inshallah, let's carry on. Place your woolen clothing and books in the sun to dry now and again so that insects do not chew the clothes and books and damage them. Soiled clothes that need to be washed should not be left carelessly here <clears throat> and there around the house, nor left scattered on the floor. Rather, place a small wooden box in a corner of the house 
and gather the soil clothes in that. So this is, you know, you have, uh, you know, washing up uh, baskets as well. And that is, rather than putting them on the floor, and leaving them around, get a washing up basket and put all the clothes in there. And inshallah, they'll be all to okay as well. Mashallah. In regards to uh, swelling and pain in the feet, uh, Afsab, um, a couple of things here. I'll, one uh, spiritual cure I'll mention and also give a, a garelu. Okay, so um, if the person who's uh, um, messaged in uh, suffering from pain in the feet as well as swelling, if they write or get written on a piece of paper, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, 67 times, make it into an amulet and wear it, inshallah, uh, swelling and pain in the feet will be removed. That's uh, the spiritual cure. And in regards to the totka, uh, it mentions daily on an empty stomach, naharmu, on an empty mm -hmm. stomach daily, take a pinch of black seed with water, inshallah, the swelling of feet and pain, inshallah, will be removed. Another um, very important thing, inshallah, do not spread news about something sad, worrying, upsetting and illness, etc. until it has been confirmed properly. Now, this is another thing. It's like Chinese whispers uh, where, you know, we haven't confirmed the news and then everyone starts to spread that as well. We were in Eid, didn't we? You know, where the news wasn't confirmed and messages were coming, you know, Eid is going to be on Tuesday, Eid is going to be on Tuesday. And then we, if we finally get a message, Eid is on Monday. Again, make sure that you confirm things before you pass them on to others as well. And even uh, about someone... You know, who's ill or even sadly who's passed away. <coughs> Make sure you are sure. There was a case where someone came and oh, do you know that person? And I, thought, oh, I was really shocked and I thought, Allah Ta'ala khair for me. I've only met him the other day. And, uh, you know, and he goes, oh no, he's passed away. Badi Patala guy was someone else. And I thought, yeah, you know, Make sure that you find out Sometimes who that person is. It could be somebody with the same name. We have that incident Jeez, as well, so if you remember. Names, yeah. Somebody has a similar name and we thought, oh. And that's after we found uh, out somebody Mufti else. Sahab, someone sent to me a message of Mufti Sahib has passed away. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. That's what you're talking that's about. That's what I was talking about. That's 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 I, I, I was chatting to him. I go, uh, well, if he's passed away, then I'm, I'm just uh, dragging him to the, in the next world then. But Alhamdulillah. So make sure that you, whenever you know you have this uh, confirm confirmation, that's when you start to pass on yeah. messages as well. But the very uh, tricky uh, instant that was because uh, the, this person was a Mufti and the other person was a mufti, and then the names were exactly the same, as well as the nisbati as well. Yeah. It was all exactly the same, so it was very, very uh, tricky. Very one, tricky yeah. one, yeah. Yeah, I've said there was a message uh, quite a bit back regarding some someone whose child had a habit of a lying. Uh, something I wanted to mention in regards to that was Amir al-Sunnat that wrote um, a booklet, a small booklet for children, The Lying Thief. Yeah. I'd recommend that they, uh, if they could, Either purchase it from Maktabatul Madina, if not, if that's not possible, if they can download it free from Daud Islami website, Um It's in English as well, The Lying Thief, it's called. Mm. Um, maybe give to the child, because it's actually for children. It's, uh, yeah. it's one of the booklets from among the series, which Amir al Sunnah wrote for Atfar, for children. So, inshallah, this may play a part, inshallah. inshallah. Maybe the words that you know we're using are not... Uh, helpful and sometimes the, you know what the happens written is, words of a, a valley, maybe, yeah, sometimes what happens is maybe the parents are telling the children <clears throat> but it doesn't go through to, to them i've just uh, had messages mashallah from an islamic brother and he's been in contact with a brother who's you know basically he's run away from home he's done a lot of things and you know now he's come back home after so many weeks or months i think Indeed. And, you know, he goes that whenever my parents or anyone in our family says anything to me, I just listen and take it out of my ear because it's the way they say it sometimes. You know, and then this mm. Islamic brother, mashallah, he goes, the only once he said to me, you know, and uh, I listened to him. Again, you know, if you look at Amir al-Sunnah, many, many people that have become mm. namazi today, you know, uh, you know, parents have keep telling them, Namaz Puro, Namaz Puro, we didn't listen. Indeed, but Alhamdulillah, as soon as this Wali of Allah said once, you know, Alhamdulillah, we listened to them. There's this, uh, an incident <coughs> regarding Indeed. Bishri Hafi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, that uh, it was a busy market and this person, he kidnapped a woman and put a knife to the <coughs> throat. <coughs> and, uh, you know, people were there shouting out to him, Allah of Hofkar, Allah's watching you, don't do this, leave her alone, let her go. And he says that he, he wouldn't let him go. 
So Bishri Hafir Rahmatullah Ta'ala, he walked past him, said mm-hmm. something and the person Whispered fainted. Whispered in the ear, whispered something in the ear. And yeah, and walked. he fainted and the people, they said, what did he say? He goes, he said, Allah's watching you. And he goes, they said, that's what we've been telling we've been you. Shouting, we've been shouting that for Yeah, and he goes that. <laughs> I, so this is the beauty of a of, of blessing, <clears throat> mashallah, of the words Alhamdulillah. of a great wali of Allah. Azza wa Alhamdulillah. And I'd recommend that if, if they don't already, if they haven't got a habit collectively at home, if they watch Madini Muzakar on a Saturday as well. Inshallah, okay. um, one uh, I'd say tried and tested. No matter what problem, what things are going through your mind, a lot of the times you put Madhi Mazaka, you sit there in front of a mirror and, and something will be mentioned about that topic. It's happened so many times. Yeah. So, like we say, don't uh, we? Sometimes you sit with some problem, or you might, there might be something that you're going through at home. Or something in the, the family is going through some problem, etc. You'll sit down in front of Madhi Muzakara and just offhand something regarding that matter will be discussed in the Madhi Muzakara. You know, one day I was watching a Madhi Muzakara and someone asked me a question and I thought I'm going to ask someone. And that exact, <clears throat> as if you know, it was for me. And as soon as that person sent me that message, then I thought, Chalo, I'll ask someone exactly the same time that you came on the TV. And I thought, Subhanallah, mashallah. Mm-hmm. The same topic after we were talking, you know, you might, somebody might think, oh, it might have been a coincidence. I don't know if you remember uh, reading regarding this. There used to be the annual Dawud Islami Ijtima in Multan Sharif. Gee. And in that Ijtima, there was somebody who attended in that Ijtima by coincidence. Mm. And he had uh, intentions of committing suicide after he gone from you know, after he finished from the event and uh, the topic or the, the 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 main beyond the main speech was regarding khudkushi the cure mm-hmm. for from uh, you know committing suicide uh-huh. and then that person repented from his intent of his intention and, and he mentioned it afterwards alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah we had an istikhara request where someone wanted a, a code is p i s c e s i don't know what it means uh, but uh, the istikhara came back he will come back to you Inshallah Azza wa Jal. Allah Ta'ala make it easier for you as well. May Allah Ta'ala make it easier for all the families who are suffering, you know, any kind of a problem. And another thing, beautiful thing that we should give sadaqah, give charity. Doesn't have to be a certain amount, but whatever charity you give, always try to give charity. There's another beautiful way where you can set up a direct debit for a day. Alhamdulillah, we have, you know, we made a, a you know, one pound a day direct debit. Yeah, yeah. Where you set up that, that, that direct debit, one pound a day will be, you know, one pound, you can have an ice cream. We've had Fridays actually gone now, but something which is a beautiful thing regarding Friday, that if one's going to give sadaqah, yeah. uh, for example, you're going to give sadaqah and you give it on Friday, it's yeah. multiplied by 70. So if you've got uh, an amount that you want to give, for example, just say that your intention is that I'm, I want to give 12 pounds a month. Yeah. Whatever cause it is, maybe one of the departments of Dawud Islami, maybe Jamiat al Madina, Madini Channel, whatever. Yeah. So if you've got a department that you want to give and you want to give, just say, I'm giving an example of 12 pounds, for example. So if you want to give 12 pounds a month, after divide that into three pounds and set your direct debit so three pounds go from your account every Friday. Mashallah. You're still giving the 12 pounds. This one pound a day, uh, what we've Jee. done is, is go out every Friday. Jee. We've got that in mind. Jee. Jee. Alhamdulillah, I've got mine set up already, mashallah. Jazakallah khaira. Inshallah, hopefully we should be back, <laughs> back next week, inshallah. Please take inshallah. care of yourself. Salu ala al-Habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah heal you from whatever pain. You are suffering from May Allah heal you from whatever pain You are suffering from